All right, I'm going to show you something that's not very shocking at all. The quote-unquote female pastorix of the charismatic devil building known as Bethel Church is coming out and espousing open theism. Let me show you this real quick. Uh, it says, um, Bethel pastorix spouts open theism, quote, God does not, doesn't know our exact future. This is a wicked heresy, this open theism thing. It's very, very wicked. It's saying that basically God doesn't know the future, essentially denying that God is all-knowing. It's a very, very wicked false doctrine. Uh, I dare say it's a heresy because it's it's not denying the the um, knowledge of God, which you read Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 to 9. The knowledge of God is, is his thoughts are beyond our thoughts. His, thought, his ways are higher than our ways. Uh, again, that's Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 to 9. But it says here on Protestia.org, uh, Jenna Winston is a pastrix at Bethel Church in Redding, California, and also the proprietor of the Heartscaping Ministry. Uh, her testimony is that she was diagnosed with she is a diagnosed schizophrenic, and she and this is the same person who said that she has time travel or something like that. You know, observing times like it talks about in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 10 to 12. She's a charismatic witch, but. She is a diagnosed schizophrenic who spent the first 40 years of her life going through a psych ward and holds a multiple abuses and mental illness diagnosis and extreme drug addictions and has multiple and has had multiple suicide attempts all before winding up at a faith-based recovery program where she claims to have had a radical encounter with Jesus that quote forever changed the trajectory of her life. Now, I do agree she did have an encounter with a spirit being calling itself Jesus Christ, but it was not the Jesus Christ of the Bible. It was the another Christ. It was, you know, a devil manifest as an angel of light, like I warned about in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse number 14. Uh, finding freedom from her demons, she calls herself a seer prophet uh, and does counseling through her heartscaping ministry and specializes in her healing, which is totally witchcraft, by the way. I had, there's an there's a inner healing shop near my house. It's a witchcraft shop. It's completely filled with occultism and witchcraft. Uh, inner healing, prophetic deliverance, identifying and cultivating your spiritual gifts, and restoring your full identity, unquote. Uh, one distinctive is that unlike most people shilling their wares, hers uh, unusually is upscale in terms of their price, with a typical course being $129. Okay, uh, That's what you call love of money. That's what you call mammon, serving mammon, okay? Uh, this type of, of love and obsession with money is, you know, you find that typical with these charismatic, you know, witches. Let me show you what the Word of God says about stuff like this. Uh, I'm going to go to Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse number 10. He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver, nor he that loveth abundance with increase. This is also vanity. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse number 8. There is one alone, and there is one, there is not a second. Yea, he that hath neither child nor brother, yet there is no end of all his labor. Uh, neither is his eye satisfied with riches. Neither saith he, For whom do I labor, and bereave my soul of good? This is also vanity. Yea, it is a sore travail. You know, well, earthly riches and wealth are just vanity. But a lot of these charismatic witches and Jezebels and, and occultists, they're obsessed. They want your money, basically. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil, and while, while some which coveted after, they have erred from the faith, and pierced themselves with, through with many sorrows. That's simple. These charismatic Jezebels, these, these witch observers, it's funny how it's always women too. It's just funny how it, it's always women that, that get these you know revelations and get these you know spiritual gifts. It's funny because none of, no women in scripture ever had any, ever spoke in tongues, ever had any of that stuff. But yet, they, somehow, it's the charismatic women. It's always the charismatic women that get all these gifts, even though that was never in scripture, or w where women perform these gifts. But let's get back to the article. Let me just do full screen again. In a conversation with Sean Bowles, editor's note, Sean, if you're reading this, I, you don't need to read that. Uh, Winston explains how God knows a bit about us, but but does but he doesn't know our future. So he's saying that God knows a bit about us, but doesn't know our future. This is what she says, quote, true deliverance is about there are so many things that happen in our lives all the time that God never planned. God doesn't make bad things happen, but he will take the assaults from the enemy, uh, but who, but he doesn't want us happy and full of life and walking in our identity and we're all gifted. 
uh, we are all called, you have an epic. He says, and so he doesn't know our exact future, but he does know our callings. Okay, so denying that God is all knowing. He does know our giftings, yeah, you don't read the, read the whole thing. Um, this sort of theology, it plays in hand with, Beth, with Bethel leader Bill Johnson. Bill Johnson's view that God doesn't control everything and some things can happen beyond his control, saying a few months ago, uh, my understanding is that in this area creates the greatest challenge for me. My approach is that God doesn't control everything. Uh, okay, let me show you what the Word of God says about that. Colossians chapter, I believe it's verse 1. Uh, at Colossians 1.17. And he, referring to Jesus Christ, is before all things, and by him all things consist. Yes, he does control everything. Now, you do have free will. I'm not denying that. A good scripture proof. Actually, I'll show you two good scriptures proving free will that make a problem for the Calvinists. Uh, if we, if we, or Ezra chapter 1, verses 4 to 6. Uh, and whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the men in his place help him with silver and with gold and with the goods and with the beasts, because the free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. And then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah, and Benjamin, and the priests, and the Levites, with all of them, whose spirit God hath ra had raised, to go up to build the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. And, and all they that were about them get, strengthened their hands with vessels of silver and gold, with self, vessels of silver with gold, with goods, and with beasts, and with precious things. Beside all that was willingly offered. Okay. Ephesians chapter, or sorry, Ezra chapter 3 verses, I can't remember the exact, Ezra chapter 3 verses, uh, I think it's, let me just make sure I got the exact reference, yeah, Ezra chapter 3 verses 3 to 5, and they set, uh, and they set the altar upon its basis, for fear was upon them, because the people of these countries, uh, because, and they offered burnt offerings thereon unto the Lord, even burnt offerings morning and evening, and they, and they kept also the feasts of the tabernacles, as it is written, and offered daily burnt offerings by number, according to the custom, and as the duty of every day was required. Uh, it says, and afterward offered the continual burnt offering, both of the new moons, and of all the set feasts of the Lord that were consecrated, and of every one that willingly offered a free will offering unto the Lord. Okay, what do you have there? You have free will offerings being offered willingly by their own choice. That's in Ephesians, not Ephesians, Ezra chapter 3, verses 3 to 5. I'm, not, I'm just not good at reading on a computer. I do apologize. It does mess up my eyes a little bit. And also, Ezra chapter 1, verses, verses 4 to 6. You have free will offerings being offered willingly. So you have them doing it by their own choice. And uh, free will, the term appears over 16 times in the King James Bible. The word sovereignty of God appears nowhere. So it's want to do a little kick, kick at Calvinism real quick. But the Charismatics are just as wicked as the Calvinists in many ways. But it says here, uh, he is in charge of everything. And the way I like to illustrate as well, this is what the Bethel Church, the, the Charismatic Devil who runs Bethel Church. And the way I'd like to illustrate, you're a parent or you're in charge of, the, of your household, but you're not in control of everything that happens, you know. Uh, some dish will break, something will happen, somebody will say something that was unkind. Those things aren't because of your influence, they're because you have a household of free will. Now that is true, you have free will, but God has control. Again, all things consist by Jesus Christ, Colossians 1.17. Uh, so that was just the end of the article. Uh... Yeah, I think, I think that's the end of the article. So yeah, basically they're denying that God has control, but they're also denying that God is all-knowing. So this is this is the type of fruit that comes from this wicked charismatic devil building known as Bethel Church. The charismatic movement is a very, very wicked movement. There may be some charismatics who I do believe are saved, but a lot of these charismatics are just into this weird occult, occultic, uh, witchcraft, uh, necromancy, observing times, all that stuff, a lot of them are lost. Again, I'm not saying they're all lost. I, th I think there are some charismatics who are saved. Absolutely. But the charismatic movement as a movement is very, very wicked and uh, filled with devils. I mean, when they speak in tongues, it's devil possession. The way they act when they're performing the gifts of the Spirit is identical to how devils, how devil possessed people act, like in Mark chapter 5. It's very, very wicked. And the spouting open theism is just more blasphemy that comes from this wicked, demonic, satanic, charismatic cult building known as Bethel Church. 
So don't be deceived by the whole charismatic movement. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.